Hey there, so I wanted to show how easy it is to create materials with random attributes. So each object that that material is applied to looks a little bit different. And I recently used this little trick in a, a bar scene that I made recently. So if you look in here, you can kind of see that each of these bottles have different label colors. And then each of the bottles, if you look even closer, you can kind of see that each of them appear to be full or not full or basically have different levels of liquid inside of them so um that's what's random and i you know i i, I could have made that manually or like picked these different colors and like manipulated the height of the like, i could have done this by hand but i'm you know it's hard enough to do everything else so i like to save time and i'm kind of lazy so um i wanted to have just a, a, a random like i wanted one material to kind of handle all this randomness. So that's what um, that's what I want to show you. It's pretty easy. And um, so let's switch to a different blender file that I have prepared. So here's a bottle that we're gonna, uh, we're gonna create a material for this that does those random things. But before we get started, please make sure that you have uh, in your preferences, make sure that you go to your add-ons and make sure that you have uh, Node Wrangler. Uh, installed or active or enabled rather whatever they call it so just uh, yeah go to your add-ons and your preferences just type in no w and make sure that that is ticked i'm going to be using that quite a bit in this video so all right so let's get to shading and i'm going to first add a new material for the glass so we'll just call this uh glass um slash liquid and why i'm calling it that will become clear in uh in a second and before i even go any further let me make sure that screencast keys is going okay okay so for our glass i don't want this principal bsdf default uh shader so i'm just gonna get rid of that and i want to um i want to add in uh glass bsdf and I want two of these. So I'm going to hit shift D and duplicate that. And one of them is going to be the clear part of the, the bottle. And the other one is going to be the liquid part or what appears to be the, like the, the filled part of the, the bottle. And I just want to make sure that this is kind of darker a little bit, something like something like that. So this first one will be the empty part and the bottom one will be the full part. And the next thing I'm going to do is mix these things together. So I'm going to add a mix shader here and then just feed both of these into the inputs and then finally hook that up to our output. So let's take a look at what we have with the material preview. Okay. So this is the kind of, it's kind of half and half. So if I move this factor slider over to the left, now I'm seeing completely the first one, the first input into the mixer. And then if I move it all the way to the right, I'm seeing full, uh, fully this one. So this is gonna be our liquid. And this again is gonna be the clear part of our bottle. So I'm just gonna leave this uh, at one for now. And what we need to do though, is we need to manipulate, this is what we're gonna ultimately be manipulating procedurally to determine how far up our liquid goes. So really I want um, this bottom uh, shader to kind of go up to maybe something like this. And then I wanted to quickly switch to this top shader, which is, um, it's gonna look clear because its color is white. And I want that to be the rest of it. So it'll look like a, like a partially full bottle. And in order to do that, we need to access the texture coordinate for this object. So what we need to do is add in a texture coordinate node here, and then we'll add in um, a mapping. Oops, get rid of that. We'll add in a uh, mapping node after this, and then I'm gonna put in the generated output into the vector input of the mapping. So just real quick, and I'm not going to go into each one of these because it would take way too long. And I'll link to a tutorial by Arendale who does this way better than I could. Uh, each of these represents a different method for mapping 
coordinates, mapping like basically the X, Y, Z coordinates of each possible like minuscule point on the surface of this object. And generated is the one that we're interested in using for this. And again, Arendelle can explain in detail what all of these do, but for this one, I'm interested in using generated. And, uh, and here's our first node wrangler uh, feature that we use. So if you just hit control shift, click, I'm just going to do that right on this mapping node. And this will show you, I mean, there's a lot going on. Here's a lot of different colors. And basically this represents the RGB values of each X, Y, Z coordinate that falls on the surface of this object. So basically X, Y, Z, those points in space map to RGB colors. So that's why we're seeing kind of a range of different colors mixed together. And this might be a little bit more clear if I separate some of these out and we'll just look at one axis at a time. So X or Y or Z. So in order to do that, we'll add a separate, uh, separate X, Y, Z. Technically you could use separate RGB. It's the same thing because RGB maps to X, Y, Z and vice versa. But um, just for clarity, I'll use just this X, Y, Z separation node. And then I'm going to throw that right in to here. And again, we're still looking at our node wrangler viewer. So we're, we're kind of skipping all of this stuff in the middle. We're going directly from this node to the output, what we're seeing on screen. So uh, if I, and if again, um, using our node wrangler feature, control shift click, I'm just going to do that twice to get to the Z output of the separate XYZ node. And now we're just looking at the Z axis. So if I look from the front, we're seeing coordinates as they fall along the surface of this object going from zero at the bottom all the way to one at the top. So zero is black, one is white. And in here was going to be 0 0.5. I know it doesn't look that way in screen. This looks more white than, than black or even gray, but um, that's just the nature of the way this gradation is displayed on screen. So just trust me that that's exactly halfway up and that's 0 0.5. So this is what we're going to be using to drive this factor again i'm going to hit control shift click here to bring us back to what we were looking at before and we're going to use this z, this uh this z texture corner mapping to feed this factor to kind of control which of these two glass shaders are uh, are showing ultimately and that's what's going to give us the appearance of a partially full bottle so let me go back and shift uh shift click on this separate xyz let's do that a couple times to get back to, to z and i know i'm using z and z interchangeably <laughs> i apologize for that but just i don't know um yeah uh bear with me anyway um where were we? Right. So the Z axis of separate X, Y, Z texture coordinate system is where we're at now. Obviously this, uh, this gradation doesn't quite work for us. So if I were to feed in these, um, the, the Z values from zero to one into this factor, and then again, shift click, uh, control shift click rather on this shader to get us back to our uh, result. Uh, we're kind of seeing, <laughs> we're seeing um, the the liquid part, that like kind of this brownish color at the top, and then it's kind of like fading into our, uh, our clear part of the, the glass at the bottom. That's not really what we want at all. So let me control shift click back over here and uh, a couple times to get the Z. So we want like a hard stop from black to white. That's what we need to um to get us where we where we want so easiest way to do that is to add a math node and i'm going to throw that right in after the z output and what i want is i think i want less than yes less than so less than is going to be you know it's, it's going to be true or false right so it's going to be black or white it's either less than this threshold or it's not so 0.5 is right in the middle. And now I can see that I can manipulate this threshold and it um, it creates that effect that, that I want. And this is now what I'm gonna be using to feed in to the factor of our mix shader. And again, shift, click, uh, shift, control, shift, click this mix shader again. And let's clean this up a little bit so we know what's going on. 
Um, now, this is a little bit closer to what I want. Now I can mess with the slider a little bit for the threshold where it's cutting off. So I can uh, I can see that this is giving the effect of a partially full full bottle. And this now is what I want to randomize. So here's where we add in this cool node called object info. This is super handy. And you'll notice that there's an attribute called random. And this output is what I'm going to provide the threshold for the math node. And now this is just going to give me some random value between zero and one. And that's going to assign it to the math node. And that's what we are going to be using again for the factor of the mixer which is gonna give us our partially full bottle. So if I do this a couple times, me, uh, I'm gonna hit Alt-D to duplicate this a couple times along the x-axis here. So now you can see every time I apply, or every time an object has this material that we're creating applied to it, it's going to randomly uh, this random uh, is going to be it's going to be it's generating a random number basically, and it's going to assign it to the things we assign it to, and it's going to uh, to look different. So that's what we want. Pretty cool. And now what we want to do is let's add a random label with different colors. So let's uh, let's go back to our solid shading. Let's look from the front, and then I'm just going to go into edit mode for this, and let's just kind of uh, fix some of these. Uh, that's maybe a little bit too much, maybe. Hmm. I guess that's okay. So that will be our label. And we'll just create a new slot in this material. And we're going to create a new material for that slot. And we'll call it label. And then back in our slots with the label slot selected. And with these faces selected... I'm going to hit assign to make sure that that gets assigned. And then if I tab out and go to material preview, what I should see is a white label on all these things, right? Which I do because I haven't done anything with this material. It's just a, it's just a white thing, which I, you know, I can change the color of this, but that's what I want. I want to randomize this color. And the easiest way to do that is to add a color ramp with a bunch of different possible values that it could be randomly selected. And I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna provide the color output of this ramp into the color of this material. And right now it's, well, it's still white, but um, what we need to, or like, is this whatever we assign this factor to? So you can see the factor of zero puts it all the way up to the left part of the ramp. Factor of one um, selects the rightmost part. And so this factor we want to randomize and that's almost there, but we just want different colors. So I want to add in a couple different possible uh, colors along this ramp. So we'll add a couple different stops on this ramp. And instead of uh, a linear, uh, instead of a linear uh, interpolation along the continuum of this color ramp, I want this to be constant. So I just want hard, uh, hard stops and abrupt changes to these colors. And I just want to pick some different, different colors. I guess it doesn't really matter what these things are. Let's pick some different colors and okay. So here's some different colors. And then, uh, you remember this object info node the random output of that, that's what we're gonna to use to feed in the factor of the color ramp. And now we get our random labels. So if I keep duplicating these, hit Shift D, move it a little bit, just keep creating different colors. And I should get my random, all kinds of random stuff. I'm not sure what's going on with these in the middle. I guess it just generated five very nearly identical random numbers. I guess it's still random, but they're all very high. Huh, interesting. Well, whatever. Um, yeah, so that's how you can um, add some quick variation to your shaders on a single material. And uh, yeah, I hope you find this useful and find some use for it in whatever it is that you're doing. Drop a like if you like and subscribe if you found this helpful. 
uh, if you do, I'll see it because I get notified and it really, it honestly makes my day to be, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, happy blending and have a good one. Thanks.